Well, you know, just get my little filming setup put in place for this Q&A I'm about to film. Got the little topside creeper drop down. Got an old granny rocking chair right in front of the good old first gen, which by the way, we are gonna be starting to get back in action here. It's been freaking cold the last couple days, but it's starting to warm up and uh, we're gonna have nice uh, mid to high 60s weather again in summer. And we're finally gonna get to run this thing day in and day out and uh, use the pull some trailers and crap like that and just run it in the summer, man. Just run this thing and uh, keep it living and breathing. So. That's gonna be the plan, and hopefully we can get some paint and wheels and tires in this thing this summer too. What is up, Loud and Proud Crowd? I hope you guys are doing absolutely flipping fantastic today. I'm actually gonna do just kind of like a QA and a today. It's one of those things where I'm in the process between Nasty Red's been kind of wrapped up, so we're kind of in a transitioning phase of working on that truck for a little over a month to we're getting ready to, to start working on the next truck, so it's kind of a few days in between while we're just kind of sorting stuff out. So I'm just gonna try to nail down and get some other questions for you guys answered while we're in the transition from finishing up one truck, finishing up finishing up under the hood, and transitioning to the next one. But I've got a few days where, you know, there's some other stuff that I need to address, and so I'm gonna do a Q&A for you guys today. One of the things I really wanna talk to you guys about is the 7.3 power stroke this is kind of something that I want to address in the beginning of the video kind of get that across and there's gonna be a bunch of questions on it let me just take you out to the truck right now and just kind of show you around so here's the old 7.3 aka old whitey aka just the OG farm truck this is the first diesel truck my dad ever bought the truck that I literally grew up in this was the truck we went on all of our long road trips on all the way to PA you know cold start in the winter driving through deep snow like this was this is the the truck the rig I can't say it's getting old because we have most of our trucks are older in this one but it's just getting to a point where higher mileage is getting closer to 300,000 which still runs great don't get me wrong thing still runs awesome but it's got an oil cooler leak which uh, we are gonna fix of course um, but it's starting to rust on the rock on the cab corners pretty bad the rockers are pretty much gone there's a little bit of bubbling starting you know down around the fenders in a couple of spots those little rust spots there have always been there for years just from using the tailgate this cab corner over here kind of rusted out um but i mean but the, but the frame is good like it's surface rust but it's but it's solid still you know what i mean um Anyways, I'll get into some information on this truck here. The reasons for possibly saying goodbye to it at some point here soon. We're gonna get right into this Q&A in just a bit, but I just want to, like I said, I wanted to address the 7.3 thing. I've been getting gobs of messages and questions about the 7.3 in the comments, on Instagram, Snapchat, everything. First off, the reason we haven't been running the 7.3 in like the past few months is it's got an oil cooler leak it's pretty bad, which is something I've never tackled before. Not that I can't learn it, I've just never done it. With that truck, we're probably going to say goodbye to that truck at some point here sooner than later it's more than we want to work with to make that truck a rust free body again which we've got a lot of other trucks we've really got to sink money into that are a lot lower miles and a lot more desirable on the market it's just not justifiable to even own that truck so there's no real sense in spending a bunch of money on that truck just to let it sit there you know what i'm saying like the nasty red being the new farm truck which is the plan from the beginning after we had bought the truck we kind of decided my dad's like you know what this truck's got you know half the miles of the 7.3 how about what we do is we seriously just build this truck and for less than $17,000, by the time it's done, after all horsepower parts, body work, paint work, everything, for less than $17,000, we will have the dream farm truck that we want and it's only gonna have 150,000 miles on it, you know what I mean? And it's a 12 out. Not to mention that truck, if we can keep it once it's pretty much restored, keep it in top, top shape, that truck in a handful of years, it's gonna be worth its weight in cash. And 7.3 just sits there. You know, it just we hate to see a truck just sit there that we don't get to use. And the first gen is kind of a classic. We just don't want to run it in the winter. It's just kind of our deal. We don't want to run it in the salt and snow and stuff like that. There's a different reason for owning this truck than there is the 7.3. The 7.3 used to be like our farm truck, our work truck. We love power strokes and I plan to buy more. Just that truck, we just can't justify owning it right now. But I do plan on buying myself an OBS power stroke at some point this summer. You guys will get the whole wrap on that here soon enough. I kind of took a vote on YouTube and out of almost 7,000 votes, I couldn't believe how many votes I got, almost 7,000 votes, 40% out of the option between a Duramax, OBS Power Stroke, first gen or third gen for my next truck to buy, to probably build for two or three months and then do another big giveaway, 40% out of those four options voted OBS Power Stroke. So I think it's a pretty high demand truck, obviously, clearly, and I was surprised. Like a vote for more first gen content was like 10% out of 7,000 people said they want to see more first gen stuff, you know, for another build and giveaway. So few people said that. And third gen, way, 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 way down. That doesn't mean I won't get one because I still might want one myself. You got to give the people what they want. You know what I mean? Like we're here to entertain you, but also stay with our passions and what we want to do as YouTubers. And 
I saw some guy in a, in a comment section, I'll, shoot, I'll just tell you who it is, Street Speed 717 I was on his Instagram and looking through his comments and uh, it was crazy, the people that were just dogging on him, dude, you need to do what the viewers wanna see, don't just do what you wanna do, we're the ones that put money in your pocket, in your account, make content that we wanna see, don't just make content that you wanna make. You know, just all this kind of stuff, like if it wasn't for us, you wouldn't have a job, you wouldn't have nice things, you wouldn't have, and that kind of stuff gets me chapped a little bit. And the reason for that is it's like, it's not your career, it's not your money, it's his passion, it's his dream, let him live it the way he wants to. If that involves him talking about his cars in his garage and talking about the mods, and then going to a shop and filming the stuff getting done here and there and just picking up and discussing, you know, what happened, why you did it or whatever, talking about the latest and greatest cars, or just buying a new car. Let him do what he wants to do. It's his passion, it's his dream. Let him live his dream the way he wants to live his dream. You know, same for me. I wanna live my dream the way I wanna live my dream. Now, I do want to make sure I cater to what people wanna see because when it comes to people, if, if you're not catering to a degree towards what they wanna do, then you're eventually gonna kinda of get tanked and it's slowly gonna taper off and people are gonna get kinda of bored if you're not doing something new and exciting. But there's a certain point where you just gotta understand like, dude, if you wanna see that kind of stuff, go to a different channel that has that kind of stuff that you're talking about. Don't try to force what you wanna do onto somebody else's agenda because that's what you want and it's all about you. And then you try to turn it into like, your dream wouldn't be possible without me. I hate it when people are like that. Just, it's so discouraging. I wanna do this and I wanna pursue it, but I don't want people like up in my face like, Without me, you can't do what you do. I think it's really wrong and it's kind of messed up. Let's go through these. What's the greatest advantage slash disadvantage to having a successful YouTube channel? Greatest advantage is you get to do what you wanna do every day, you get to do what you're passionate about, and then you can pursue other avenues of income or just ideas or events or agenda. You can do and integrate that to your audience that you've kind of developed with where you went with your YouTube channel. What I mean by that is like, you know, for example, doing the giveaways. I wanna do giveaways. I love the idea of it. I've done like small scale stuff, but I'm finally to a point to where now I can do bigger giveaways, I can give stuff back, but it's gonna get a lot of people engaged, it's gonna do a lot of things, and it's also gonna help me when it comes to income. There's a lot of advantages to that, being able to do your own thing, and without a YouTube channel, I can't really do giveaways, I can't really do any big stuff like that, I can't push my own products, my own brand, or anything like that. You grow an audience for one thing, and then you kind of sew in your other beliefs and your other you know goals into those people, so that you now have a family, you know, a team of people who believe in what you're doing, and want to be a part of that to where you can expand your career beyond just one thing and you can take it to a whole nother level that you would have been able to do without an audience. A disadvantage I will say is hate and people bringing you down and people that don't understand you or your career or where you're coming from and so they just assume the worst things about you all the time. I have a lot of people who are just positive, upbeat, and they're encouraging in the comments and they're keeping it clean and I really appreciate that about you guys. I'm getting to a point where you just kind of got to accept it. Like there was some guy going around on Instagram sharing says, all this kid is his daddy's money, buys all his trucks and his parts, sponsorships pay for everything he has, and this and everything's handed to him and he doesn't earn anything. When I hear stuff like that, it kind of makes me chuckle a little bit because it's just like, they just don't know. People, they just don't understand. Like they watch a 10 minute video and they think you only do 10 minutes of work a day. You have no ideas, you do no planning, you do no work behind the scenes. And it just gets really discouraging when you think like, I wonder how many people actually think I literally don't do anything to have the lifestyle that I do. What are you gonna get if your truck gets picked for the giveaway? In other words, I think he's saying, if the dually gets picked, but let's clear up. They're both my trucks. They're both paid for by me. All the parts that go into them paid for by me. And the way the giveaway is gonna work is there's gonna be a dually and there's gonna be the SRW, the single rear wheel axle truck. And basically there's just gonna be one winner gets to pick one or the other. They don't get to take both and there's not gonna be two winners picked for both trucks. So whichever truck they pick, I just keep the other. That's the way it's gonna work. And then of course, I'm just, I'm gonna buy another truck after that. Would you ever do an engine swap to make a Fummins? I was actually talking to Jacob from Pusher in person when we were taking a rip in his truck. I was like, you know what I would love to do is take a 6.4 with a bad engine, cause there's literally the, the repo lots are slapped full of 6.4s that have grenaded engines so they didn't make their payments and they got repossessed. Buy one of those trucks, and get rid of the engine and do like a 12 hour common rail swap, probably maybe a common rail swap, something that's a similar year. Put a common rail swap in that truck and then you have a nice, reliable, solid running truck that's a nice, pretty, well, good looking truck, but you got the truck cheap enough, you just buy the engine, you got it swapped, and then you got a really, really nice truck for not $40,000, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I don't know. That's something I would consider doing. Best diesel for under $8,000, second gen 12 valve. Second gen 12 valve with a five speed, best truck you can buy, because even if they run like absolute crap, they will run like crap for a long, long time versus a lot of diesels. 
they have one little small tick or one little small problem and that's the end of it. You gotta do a whole engine overhaul, you gotta repair this and that and that, you know, and it's one thing after another. 12 valves, you can even have a, even if you're a bad mechanic, you can literally, <laughs> and you mess something up small, it's not the end of the world. That truck's probably gonna run fine for a long time. Now, I'm not saying do stuff wrong and you're okay, but I'm just saying like it's probably gonna run well for a long time. So if you're into diesels, you're looking for your first diesel under eight grand, second gen 12 valve with a five speed, best truck out there for less than $8,000. Which is better, gas or diesel? If you're gonna spend like $8,000 on like a newer gasser or a 96, let's say a 2006 gasser or a 96, you know, diesel, I'd go with a 96 12 valve, just like I explained. Cheap to work on, injectors are cheap, governor springs are cheap, valve springs are cheap, push rods are cheap, everything's so cheap on those trucks. The engines, if you can find one, they're not that expensive. But if you go to like a gasser, you're gonna get half the fuel mileage, you're still probably gonna have issues, and they're probably not gonna be any cheaper than a 12 valve. They're just super simple, all mechanical trucks. As soon as you go into something with a computer though, that's a totally different ballpark. Everything is about three times as expensive. They're cheap to run, they're cheap to maintain, they do really good on fuel mileage. I don't see any like big disadvantages to owning it. If anything, it's a way bigger advantage because the thing will probably run way longer, way more miles and give you a lot less issue. Would you ever buy Duramax? Absolutely. Will we ever see more than just Cummins on the channel? Yes, absolutely. The reason with second gens right now, cheaper to work on, you can do a lot more for the money and that's kind of what you need when you're trying to produce content to get more people and to get your channel growing. That's just the only reason for really second gen 12 of right now strictly is just easier to work on, cheaper to work on. I can do it myself and save myself money on labor and parts. So it's a win-win. What was your first truck? My first truck was a 2001 Chevrolet Silverado Z71. I lifted it six inches, put 35 all terrains on it, uh, but it kept stock wheels. So the thing was kind of like, you know, stock offset, which is big tall tires, it had 101,000 miles on it. it, had a V8 in it, it was a cool truck, loved it, it was all black, it looked really nice. Would you ever build a 6.0 power stroke? No, and people can say whatever they want, oh he hates power strokes, I don't hate power strokes, like some guy made a live stream just talking about how, all, first of all, all my stuff's paid by daddy, and I hate power strokes, yet power strokes are the only videos that ever get a lot of views on my channel, all this crap. Some dude was ranting on about it on a live stream. Only way he could get views, I guess. No, I don't hate power strokes. I just don't like 6.4s or 6.7s. It's just my thing. I like 6.7s, I like 7.3s, OBS 7.3s. I just don't like 6.7s and 6.4s. There's some guys that swear that they only like 6.4s and 6.7s. That's cool. If you like problematic trucks, that's your thing. I like reliable trucks. It's just kind of my deal. That's why we like 12 outs, 7.3s, 6.7s. It's not your thing. Who cares? If the dually is chosen in the giveaway, are you going to buy another truck or just build Big Stinky even more? So like theoretically, Big Stinky doesn't get chosen and I have to keep it, you know, whatever. Not a big deal. Sweet truck. I'd gladly keep that truck. And then I'll probably buy another one that needs built still, like an OBS 7.3, four door, long bed. Yeah, awesome. Build that truck, do something a little bit more crazy with that truck. I need to do a lifted truck on the channel. I'll, I'll do something a little bit crazy with the next one. Build that truck for two, three months, daily drive it, see how I like it, you know, whatever. Enjoy the vehicle as much as I can. And then do another giveaway and maybe for that giveaway, then have, you know, theoretically, Big Stinky's the one that's left and somebody chooses the dually. Let them choose between the next giveaway, Big Stinky, that's already built, maybe throw some new wheels on it, I don't know. Make it freshen it up a little bit for the giveaway. Big Stinky and the OBS, you know what I mean? Kind of like 96 versus 96, you know, the old school diesel trucks, take your pick. 12 Albert OBS 7.3, you know what I'm saying? Something cool like that. Just because Big Stinky doesn't get picked by the person that wins doesn't mean there's not a lot of people out there that still wouldn't want to have it, you know what I'm saying? I would probably just do that. Like in my mind, it's like if you already have the truck available to give away, just give it as an option, you know what I mean? Like I don't need to keep that truck, so might as well give it as an option for somebody else to possibly win it if they want it. You know, I have to keep the OBS 7.3 after that, who cares? I'll have a sweet truck I get to keep. You know, it's not a big deal to me. I love them all. What are the best and most useful tools that you have? This is a good one. The Creeper, not just for a good camera tripod stand. The Creeper, definitely for getting on over the engine bay. Game changer, if I must stress. Link's always in the, in the description for that thing because I keep it at the top of the description because it's a must have in your shop. The hood shop light, the hood light that we can mount up over the hood of any truck, huge game changer as well. You need that good, good lighting in your engine base. You can see what you're doing, makes a huge difference. Otherwise you pop your hood and even if you're in a shop with lights, your hood shadows it all out and it makes it a pain in the butt to see. So shop light, also link always in the description below. And then just your basic air tools. So air tools I use here and there. Mostly I just use a socket set for engine stuff, but like for other stuff like leveling kits and you know, whatever, taking the wheels and tires off great to have in the shop. How much horsepower for Big Stinky and the Dually? 
The dually, the goal is 4 to 450 with compounds, and big stinky, the goal is probably under 400. That truck's gonna be built more like economically speaking, if that's the right term for it. I mean, 400 horses is still double what it came with from, from the factory, but it's not gonna be like six, 800 horsepower. You know, it's just nothing crazy. What are your favorite trucks out of all of them? My favorite truck to drive, hands down, is gonna be the Dually. I love shifting gears in that thing, especially now that I've got it down. It's so fun to just, you know, just, you just shift through, like it's just so fun, so, so fun. You cannot beat the feeling of just feeling those tires grab and just like literally just feel like they're grabbing the earth and you're just moving. Like it just, it's just such a good feeling. Hopefully I got some questions answered. I've gotten so many questions about the giveaway stuff still. I'm trying to stress this so much. I have a video on the channel. I will try to leave a link in the description again. If you go to my home page, it's literally posted right on my home page now. Just it's like everybody, as soon as they come to my channel, they can find it. It's not going to be hard. It's right there on the home page. That's the information on the giveaway. Giveaway should be launching June 1st and we should be ready to start taking orders and getting people entered in to win that truck. Like I said so many times, guys, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to literally win a truck on a small channel. And I, yes, I consider myself a small channel. There's channels out there with hundreds of thousands, millions of subscribers. For somebody to be giving away vehicles like this that are going to be built and looking good and in really good shape at 60,000 subscribers. You have to just think though, like there's not going to be 60,000. I'd love if 60,000 people entered giveaway, but there's not going to be 60,000 people entering. Maybe a couple thousand, like maybe a couple thousand people entered. If you're going to enter one, guys, at this point is a great time to do it. It's always a good thing to enter, you know, when you're competing with only a couple thousand people versus hundreds of thousands of people for entries. I guess the way I look at it is even if you just bought the bare minimum to get in, you bought a sticker and a keychain, you know, whatever. 20 bucks, you're in. You're in, you're in the giveaway into the drawing. You could possibly win a truck. No matter what, you get your merch. You might as well put your name in because somebody's name is gonna be drawn out of that basket. Could be you. Of course, the more you spend, the more you're in. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, smash that thumbs up. Leave your comments down below. Subscribe if you're new, join the team, join the family. Like I said, giving away trucks. They might wanna be part of this team. Thank you so much. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.